saw the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake. Hostel, the Hills Have Eyes remake. The Strangers, I Spit on Your Grave, the remake. And the Last House on the Left remake. All movies released within a few years of each other. We're going to review one of them. Is it the worst of them? Find out right now on Loathsome Things, a horror movie podcast with Josh, that's me, and John, that's hey, him. Oh, welcome to a terrible movie. <laughs> God damn it. And this is not the movie I thought it was. Yeah. It's, uh, it's chock full of actors that make you go, I think I've seen them oh, in something man. else. It was, uh, yeah, made for direct-to-TV. Uh, test audiences liked it, and so they just went ahead and threw it in the theaters. Yeah, well, what could, what go, could go wrong? wrong with a zero-budget movie that was just terrible? <laughs> God damn yeah. it. It was <laughs> yeah. so bad. The effects were great, but the movie was terrible. Yeah, that one yeah. effect was yeah, great. One effect was, couple couple effects at the end were pretty cool. The rest of the movie sucked balls. Yeah. Yeah. Uh the director is Dennis Iliadis. Iliadis? It's yeah, the Iliad. Dennis He's Greek. Um <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh, he's, uh, some director with kind of, uh, passion for lesbians, yeah. you might say. Will that translate into this movie? It turns out, beyond one joke at the beginning? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not Surprisingly. <at> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, the guy who's just really into lesbians just went ahead and didn't put that scene in this movie. You know what? Good. Yeah, that that was good choice. Way to go, good Dennis. One, Dennis. Way to remake a movie that sucked to begin with and really didn't need to be remade. <laughs> 75% of what makes this movie interesting is comparing yeah. it to the original and and the movie that inspired the original. And beyond that, there's not really much here. There, there's there's nothing of interest for the viewer to watch unless they're specifically watching it to compare to the it's West Craven. It's just, film. you know, less audacious, less uh, ballsy, I guess, less peculiar, less interesting, less relevant, yeah. and yet let's go ahead and remake it anyway. It, it I will say, it, it did make me appreciate the original <laughs> a bit more, not that the original is good but the original was at least like interesting and like there was something to talk about there here there's not really a much to talk about except for the actors there's uh nope uh it's just it's just aaron pinkman uh aaron jesse the bitch pinkman aaron yeah Paul. tony goldwyn he's That's been it. in a lot of things but you know small guy it's like small actor not a small guy A.K.A. Yeah. not Rick Grimes. Monica Potter. She's been in things like Saw. So she was in great. Saw. Uh, yeah. Garrett Dillahunt was in Deadwood. Uh, no Country for Old Men, but, you know, it's not like he was in memorable. Uh, I, uh, I only remembered him from a TV show called Raising Hope where he plays a very young grandpa who is still kind of like a pothead and it's a very silly, like, My Name is Earl era sitcom. And um, so seeing him here as a uh, murder rapist was kind of wild. And no, his dyed great. black everything was very strange. His Ming the Merciless goatee was like, really distracting. He's like, I just can't grow hair right here. Like, my sideburn ends here, and then a little ways down, there's my Plus, beard. Plus, check out my giant carpenter pants. <laughs> <laughs> Who else is in this movie? Nobody. <laughs> Sarah Sarah Paxton, uh, uh, 
Bill Paxton's seventh That's cousin. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. She was, uh, she was weird yeah. looking. And then there was Martha yeah. Macasack, who played Paige, and who really yeah. has no business acting. Yeah, she was in Super Bad, and no, she, she was okay in that, I guess. Yeah, she was kind of fun yeah. in Super Bad, but she was terrible in this. Yeah, and her character was terrible too. Like they they were like, "Hey, you know what would be good if we if we took the Phyllis character and just made her just just the worst. just made her the, <laughs> just made her the worst. In fact, made her so bad that she didn't need to be there." Yeah, what if she wasn't there? This movie could have kept going. And there's a there's a, uh, this movie is just oh my god, it's it's not good. It's not good. It's and not good. you know, I, uh, well we'll get into it at the end. I'll, I'll yeah, I'll save that. But yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's not good. It's not good. It's uh as far as um a three quill three quill selections, this was probably our worst one. Virgin Spring is a great film, you know, as is the original Body Snatchers. The, the, you know, the Ferrara remake was pretty good, so on and so forth. Like Carrie, obviously, was great, um, the original. <clears throat> but uh, Wes Craven's movie we already panned uh, deeply, and we're about to rip this one pretty bad too. And if if this movie, let's say this movie was yeah. just a standalone movie, it would just it would it wouldn't even be oh, worth God. watching. You know, like it's as it is, it's barely worth yeah. watching, even for our purposes. It makes some interesting choices, but yeah, yeah, w- without the original being there, this it was movie like a lifetime no movie, purpose. plus a little bit of fancy gore at the yeah. end. That was about it. Yeah, some unbelievable stabbing and some uh, extraneous boobage. Uh, that's it. Yeah, yeah, boobs that didn't need to be there. Um, some business with a shower curtain rod that didn't uh, lots okay. of butts and and that yeah and yeah. that's about it and so and some mediocre performances yeah. including a piss poor performance by Aaron Paul he's terrible in this movie yeah yeah this was like this was around the first year of uh, Breaking Bad and uh, ooh this was. He's no. lucky he got that gig or kept no. it after this. Jesus. Yeah, they they were originally going to kill him off in season one, and then they're like, you know what? We like this Pinkman guy. He says so, bitch you know, really well. We'll give this guy a whole career. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, so let's anyways, dive into uh, it. The movie opens. We've got a little credit sequence, uh, some creepy woods. Yay. Creepy music, sort of. Not really. We cut to a car with a couple cops in it and some douche who looks like Ming the Merciless with a bad black-haired wig on, and uh, they are transporting this guy. He's a criminal, and they get stopped at a train crossing, and while they're sitting there telling really bad jokes, they get completely broadsided by a car that no one saw coming until it hit them. Um, a big yellow pickup truck yeah. out hops a ninja and the Punisher. Um, the, uh, ninja shoots the driver in the head and kills him. Uh, they spring out Ming the Merciless, and then Francis, who is Aaron Paul, uh, fucks the surviving cop a little bit more, takes his cash, and then force murders his neck to death on the side of the car. Uh, something, or it was stupid, whatever. We cut to a dreamy in-pool scene with a girl floating in the pool, uh, with... Uh, someone swimming laps. It's Mary. Hey, she's swimmy, and her mom is there to provide moral support and look like the lady that was in Lost. Kind of look like her. I'm not sure if it was her. Um, we cut to the dad, uh, Tony Goldwyn, who is a surgeon working at a hospital. Uh, mom shows up, picks him up. Cut to them all driving to their vacation house with everything that Mary has ever owned in her entire life stuffed in the back of their wagon. Um, They drive through some beautiful scenic woods, and uh, we find out that Mom's loser brother had previously stayed there, but he was kind enough to leave them some $4 champagne. Uh, Mary heads to the boat shed 
because she does. And uh, it's it idyllic, and as she watches some people boat by, she strips down to her underwear and goes for a wee swim, and then we perv watch her as she showers for no reason whatsoever. Um, well, she showers for a reason. Yeah. We don't perv Pan watch her for any reason other than to be pervs. Um, what were you going to say? Yeah, yeah, just a, a, a big long shot where the, the center of the camera is on her crotch panties, while uh, she, like, contemplates her body sexually in the mirror and uh, likes to, it then zooms in on the sweat glistening and upon her And we play connect a mole for, like, ten minutes. And uh, it's just, yeah. it doesn't need to be there. It's gratuitous and stupid. Okay, nope. that's good. That's a way to set things up. Mary wants to go, uh, she wants to take the car and go party with her friend Paige. Her mom's not into it. Her dad however, is completely sold when Mary says, you guys can have a fun evening alone by yourselves, and Dad throws her the keys and says, Has, have fun. He gives her um, yeah. a, I w would describe as a drug dealer's wad of cash, and she bails. We hear very shitty TV music as she meets up with her friend Paige, who works in a convenience store in a weird vacation town. Okay, great. They talk weed, yeah. mainly Paige, who wants weed, and Mary, who doesn't want weed. And they're being snooped on by a dead-eyed, creepy person wearing a hoodie. Um, this is where I took a little quick break and wrote, I hate this movie so far. He, <clears throat> he, invited <laughs> yes. them, he invites them back to his hotel to get some quote, premium A-grade shit after he pulls out his money to pay Paige for his shit at the store. He hides a bloody 20, buys his shit. We cut to Paige entering his slum hotel while Mary waits in the Tahoe. That's right. It's a Chevy Tahoe, not a station wagon. I'm an idiot. Uh, the most terrifying cleaning lady <laughs> on the planet uh, jump scares Mary with so bad that she gets out of the car and heads into the hotel room, uh, steps over a newspaper showing the bad guys on the front cover, and uh, inside, Paige is smoking out with Justin, just having a grand old time. Uh, she convinces Mary to smoke with them, and then fields an annoying call from her mother. Uh, great. Uh, the phone is uh, cutting out, and she wants to stay the night with Paige, but Mom's not into it. And then she does that. I can't hear you. I guess it's breaking up. I'll see you tomorrow. And uh, then mom freaks out and nags dad. And then dad doesn't do anything. And then she breaks out the wine. Um, back at the hotel, they have more hotel yeah. weed. There's bed jumping. Sad stories about lost people in families that no one cares about. I certainly didn't. Yeah. And uh, I hate Paige. Then... They fuck around and do dumb shit. It's boring. And then, thank God, the uncle and the father arrive with Sadie in tow, who looks like a pencil. And uh, she immediately gets topless uh, because pencil tits. Pencil tits. Krug uh, immediately becomes a dick. Francis was always a dick. And so on and so forth. Krug ends up yeah. gut-punching Justin just because... Uh, announces that they've been outed in the newspaper, and it begins. The knife comes out. Francis is grabby. Uh, Paige locks herself in the bathroom, bangs on the window as a cop drives by and doesn't hear anything. Francis breaks in, uh, falls into the tub for a moment. It's really funny. And then Paige finds herself with her head bashed upon the sink to unconsciousness. There's an awful lot of tub thumping in this movie. We're gonna we're gonna keep ending oh, up in the damn tub. Boy. <laughs> uh, they all load up in the SUV and they drive into the woods. Uh, even though we had just been in the desert, like the <laughs> desert motel, I don't know what's going on. Uh, Mary uses the back seat electric cigarette lighter. Is that, was that a thing? Were they like the SUV, you have cigarette lighters in the back seat so that your children can light their cigarettes with I, I have seen back seat cigarette lighters, to be fair, I guess. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. That was never a good idea. They were like, you know what? They need more cup holders, and we need to give the children access to another fantastic fire. idea. Use a cigarette lighter to get away from three rapist murderers. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, that's that's Mary's idea. I'm going to give them the wrong directions and then burn Sadie's face with a cigarette lighter, thus causing a car accident, and everyone's shit is fucked, and she doesn't even make a break for it. But during all of this, um, uh, who's her face? The other one, Paige, does make a break for it. Uh, the Everyone's pissed off. There's a prolonged sequence of chasing Paige through the woods, of retrieving her, of having her, uh, taking her top off except for her bra, and then she says a thing, and then there's a prolonged stabbing her sequence, followed by a creative choice, I will say, possibly even a good one, of them of the uh, the Krug then rapes Mary, and instead of, as in the other two movies, where it is a uh, quick thing, this one takes up minutes of screen time. It is massively more brutal than in the other two films, and I appreciate that, actually. Like, I thought that was one of the few good things that this movie did in conversation with the other films, is they made it so that rape doesn't look quick yeah. and easy it was long it was brutal it was painful it was it was unpleasant to an yeah, extent that was a that tough scene to were. watch and you know i mean but you're right i mean if there's one thing i do enjoy it's a long drawn out rape <laughs> <laughs> yes. but no you're right i mean you you're absolutely right it it did exactly yeah. what it wanted to do which was you know make you very uncomfortable and it did so and it did, really did not shy away from it um the guy did have no. a uh, remarkably well-toned ass and it didn't make any sense that they just kept focusing on that but other than that it was very un unsettling yeah yeah you got to catch oh, the, the butt yeah, that was brutal. but yeah her her screams were pretty pretty yeah. rough to hear um i'll admit that that was yeah that scene was difficult yeah, one of the most effective scenes in this movie. And uh, be, get get ready for uh, us talking about a very long sequence of <laughs> yeah. ineffective scene. This is then followed by, you know, the, the regularly scheduled milling about post-rape while everyone comes to terms with their <laughs> feelings. Uh, at this point, Mary has, stands up. She has a rock. She says that she'd like to swim. And then uh, she does a clobber and runs and hits the water, goes super fast. They're shooting at her. They're shooting at her. They're missing her. She's about to make it around the bend uh, and be out of range. But then they they shoot her and we see her. She's in the water. She's dead. Her blood is going all the fuck over the place really, really fast. Definitely dead. Not alive, Mary dead. Won't in the be water. seeing that maiden uh, anymore dead. in this movie. She's dead. That's for certain. <laughs> dead. Yeah, she's dead. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <She's dead. laughs> yeah. Done. Died in the water. <laughs> Moving on from there. Yeah. Yeah. If there's one thing we can agree. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, the gang. No, it's. Yeah, she's, she's dead. dead. I mean, let, if we haven't made that. Part, okay. So the gang heads off with Paige and Doe. Yeah. Uh, cut to the folks uh, back home having uh, dinner with, I don't know, like a delightful rose. I don't know what the fuck they're drinking. Um, the crew shows up at the door yeah. in what is one of the dumbest scenes i've ever seen in my life they look like the fucking monsters or like the adams family like they're covered in blood soaked they're swarthy creepy looking they they look like horrible people and they're just like uh yeah we, um I, you know uh, we just kind of can we come in and they're like oh sure come on in like what who the fuck are these people are so stupid i would never let these people in my house Ever. <laughs> I mean, it's just insane. Yeah. They're just, they look 
I mean, if I, they look like all of them look like Simon Legree with like the long mustache and the curl and the and they're all like, hey, can you let us in? It's like, why the fuck would? OK, anyways, <laughs> so they let him in, you know, yeah. because why not? They're great. They're good people. And uh, dad sets Francis's nose, pops it back into place. Sounds delightful. Uh, he starts stitching it up. Krug, or as I spelled it here, Kurg, and Sadie, feign oh, yeah. not being evil, and really works well, apparently, because the parents are so fucking stupid they don't realize anything. Mom offers to make hot chocolate for Justin, who has somehow suddenly become six. Why the parents are not not suspicious at this point, I don't understand. Uh, cue the power going out. Cue dad leaving to check on it. Mm-hmm. Q mom starting to realize that maybe something's not right, but not being able to put her finger on it. Uh, Dad busts out the Jenny, gets her started. We've got limited power in the house. Let's start a fire and tell ghost stories. No, they didn't do that. Dad finishes stitching up Frank's schnoz. Uh, Fire's going. Uh, Now the phone is out. (laughs) Great. Dad suggests that the crew spend the night. Hey, why not? Why not? What? Yeah, yeah what possible reason could you have for not having these four extremely disturbing, including one teenager who is clearly dead in his eyes, people stay overnight? Yeah. That's a great idea. Even Krug is like, uh, uh, probably should, no, I mean, we really need to get going. And the dad's like, no, please, I insist. I want all four of you staying in my house. So they decide to stay. <laughs> great move, dad. Okay, that's fine. Whatever. Mm. Justin sees a photo of Mary on the refrigerator door. His head explodes. Uh, He manages to put it back together just in time to get ill and lock himself in the bathroom. Krug goes to go check on him. Uh, He comes out. He threatens him. In the process, Justin manages to leave Mary's necklace wrapped around a a red Solo uh, frat party cup that's in the kitchen. And uh, so that the parents can find it. Mom shows them to the guest room, which is where they will be spending the night, but hides, uh, ironically, huh? <laughs> hides uh, Mary's oh! jewelry, her jewelry. And then, then we see a little bit of, of Frank fiending on Mom, which is just, it's terrible. He's like, hey, uh, you know, I just yeah. was going to come out and get something to drink, bitch. And so. <laughs> It, that's going on. <laughs> it's, it's the so worst bad. scene. It, 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 like, it's just two people really not being good <laughs> so, at flirting with each maybe other. Maybe you would like something stronger. I think I would, bitch. How about wine? I guess it's gonna be wine, bitch. Are you <laughs> wine? Like, okay. uh, we, we go see Mary just to check up on her and... Uh, Oh, I I guess we were wrong. It turns out she's still alive. Oh, wow. Who saw that coming? <laughs> so uh, she, the parents hear some clicky clacking going on outside, and they go out to check the rocking chair is banging against the wall, and Mary is zonked out on the patio in front of the rocking chair. I don't know. She's banging it against the... I don't know what the fuck. So they find her... They realize she's alive. He 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 gets her. He revives her. Uh, pulls a jungle surgery and removes the bullet. Uh, it, mom sees the necklace in the meantime. So now that stage is set for the rest of this movie to finally fucking finish. Dad does a wound cauterization <gasps> with a with a knife tip. Um, more wound care. Yeah. He cuts a hole in her. To, through to her lungs so he can drain the huis and uh, allow her to breathe. He puts the tip of the hose into a glass of water so we can see that he's doing doctory things. Who fucking cares? <laughs> he also yeah. checks on her vagina. He like takes a little peek. Just takes down a little there. hello to the hoo ha, and then mom comes back, tells him that she found the uh, the necklace. Does she find the necklace at that point? No. You know, yeah, yeah, she does. And then they have a hard cry. And then uh, yeah. he tells her that he's seen blood, the rape evidence, great. At, back at the guest house, the gang has gone night-night. Dad goes to check on the boat to see if it's usable. Can't find the boat keys, of course. Justin, in the meantime, gets up and sneak grabs Krug's gun. Frank pops in 
for the cold beer. And that's, oh, that's where we have the whole cold creep and like a phantom part where she pretends to like him and she's got knives hiding yeah. behind her back and they play booze flirt. And mom gets wine from the fridge, hides Mary's photo. Dad, in the meanwhile, uh, is is gathering, very carefully gathering the world's most whatever it is he's looking for tools that could be weapons. Also, this vacation house has more tools in it. That It's like, what the fuck? Did they build it with their bare hands or what? There's so it's many tools awesome. he's doing that. Oh, hmm, this one? Or, oh, what about this one? Like, okay. You know you can pick more than one, dude. So, yeah, that's... He, Dad's doing the whole tool thing. And then, yeah, Frank suggests yeah. in the meantime uh, that he saw that they had a hot tub. Maybe they should go out in the hot tub in a total fucking downpour. Mom, Mom votes the hot tub down and says, maybe let's go fireplace and chill. And uh, in the meantime, Frank steps out of the uh, kitchen, and of course he sees Mary because she's right fucking there. Uh, Mom smashes over, smashes him over the head with the wine bottle and stabs him in the chest. Great. Uh, Dad arrives and fights Frank because he's only been smashed over the head with a bottle and stabbed in the chest, so he's clearly up for fighting. Uh, he grabs his nose. They struggle. Mm -hmm. Mom and Dad... Well, Mom shoves his head into the dishwater, which is ridiculous. And then uh, they get his arm into the garbage disposal. Turn that on. And he goes, Ah! Ah! Bitch! Ah! Bitch! Ah! Bitch! For like, I don't know, it was like 30 minutes, wasn't it? It was a very it, I didn't long think it was going to end, but then it ends because mom puts the claw hammer claw into his skull. Uh, beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and his be ruined things plop out of the uh, garbage disposal. His hand that has like two cuts in it. I'm like, wait a minute! You just shoved his hand into a <laughs> like into a jet rotor. Why does it look like, you know, like he has a paper cut? <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh it's pretty bad uh, also the fact that like in the middle of a fight scene daddy just like pinches yeah. the the bridge of this guy's the bridge nose. of his his waxen like, oh, nose <laughs> why didn't you just punch him in the nose that's so much more uh, effort yeah I, had to, I guess they just had to draw out the agony of the close-up of him going It's just such a weird, like, wrestling move instead of actually It's such a Three a Stooges move. <laughs> I know. Yeah, whoop, whoop, yeah, whoop, yeah. Whoop. <laughs> <sighs> That was the sound of me <laughs> slapping the top of my head, if you couldn't tell. Uh, so then Mom and Dad creep into the guest house. That's where they've all been, they've been staying. They have a guest house. Um... And there's this great scene where Justin wants to hand Dad the gun, but he's all the way on the other side of the room. So Dad has to, like, pussyfoot across the room to grab the gun. And then a floorboard does a creaking, and Dad shoots and wings Sadie. Krug jumps out the window. Sadie barricades herself in the bathroom. Dad beats down the door and then beats the shit out of topless Sadie <laughs> and is just railing on her and destroying her topless half alive body until finally mom walks in and shoots her in the and then she ball. breathes a little bit and then slowly slides to the ground <laughs> boobs akimbo i don't know Oh, good. Mom and Mary wait in the boat that they can't turn on while Dad goes into the house to get Krug. I mean, the keys to the boat. They do a prolonged fight where Krug skips several opportunities to kill Dad so that he can say <laughs> gross things to him instead. Uh, just then, Justin shows up. He's got the gun now. He points it at Krug. They talk. He pulls the trigger. But the gun is empty, and then Krug stabs 
Justin it, with the fireplace poker. Now mom shows up. She has a fire extinguisher. She sprays him. She bonks him. Dad clobbers him. Krug on the ground. Everything's great. Everyone's happy. Uh, everyone gets in a boat. They uh, Justin's alive. He's fine. He's in the boat too. They're going to the boat hospital. Uh, but then all of a sudden we hear a squishy noise. The camera switches and we see a box cutter squish into some flesh. It's morning. Uh, Krug is on a table. Dad has surgically paralyzed him from the neck down because he didn't have any rope or duct tape. And then he wheels in a the broken microwave oven that was briefly mentioned at the beginning of the movie. Like, how did that gosh darn brother of mine break this microwave oven? Wheels in the microwave oven, puts it around Krug's head, sets it for popcorn, and uh, makes uh, Krug's head explode <laughs> movie over. Jesus Christ. Does a, does a microwave work with the door open? <clears throat> Well, it is an old one. I think maybe that's what his brother broke on it was the ah, safety wow. function. Who fucking cares? Why even put yeah. that in? That's so stupid. I mean, it was pretty <laughs> awesome because I knew he was, I mean, you know, I knew we were going to see a gruesome death of some sort. I did not expect his head to go all scanners <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it exploded <laughs> nose first. It's just like the little nose portion. So, so up. let that be a lesson to you folks. If you put your head in a microwave, you got about eight or nine seconds before your head pops like a fucking balloon. Yeah. Like, what the hell is that? <laughs> okay, sure. Movie over. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, it was easily my favorite oh, part for of the sure. whole movie. I, I, my, my son and I watched this one and yeah. laughed our way through it. And then when that part happened, I was like, whoa, nice. And now it's over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, let's go out on a real moral high note. <laughs> I mean, you know, seriously, if you're going to remake this movie, you need to pick your battles. And literally, in this case, your battle should be the battles at the end of the movie. And just draw that bitch out. Like, make half the movie, which, by the way, this movie was two fucking hours long. It was, it was so way long. too long. It was two hours too long, actually. But, yeah. um, but if you're gonna, yeah. if you're gonna like stretch, yeah. Yeah, if you're gonna like put a stamp on the movie, make it be the the revenge part. You know, like, you know, go easy on the rape. We don't need to see ten minutes of rape. And uh, and then we do want to see lots of really disgusting revenge. Like, just go ape shit with it. Have the dad have like a you know I don't know a, a sadistic side or something like that that we saw coming, and then we're like, oh, you pissed this guy off. You guys are in big trouble. Instead of this like surprise, the surgeon who sworn to save life killed a guy by putting his head in a microwave. <laughs> And popping it like a meat balloon. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird because like if you if you read the like three sentence long summary of this movie, it, it sounds does. fucking badass. Like like both of them, it's like, oh man, that 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 second half of this movie is gonna kick so much ass. And in both instances, the revenge part just sucks like i made that go fast but that is literally a half hour of movie that i just breeze through and most of it is just a fight scene between the dad and krug and it is mm -hmm. boring it is so boring have you seen people hit each other with the same fire poker just <laughs> over and over and over again and none of it is good you hit That's me now you movie. now you go your turn it's like Wow, okay. This yeah. is oh my god. I love the part where like Krug runs upstairs and dad is standing downstairs and he goes, Come on down, you piece of shit. <laughs> like, Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Ooh, 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 burn. <laughs> you want some ice for that burn? <laughs> oh my god. <sighs> And so, so, so Dennis, he, he, he was like, all right, so I'm going to, I'm going to ditch yeah. the humor. Great choice. And I'm going to make the rape scene long and torturous because rape is horrible. And I want to capture that in the movie. I don't want it to, I don't want to like try to sell rape as easier or more pleasant than it actually is. Great choice. And he was like, but the part I'm going to take out 
in addition to the the humor, I'm also going to take out the Home Alone element. That no one wants to see a Home Alone element in here. That would have kicked so much ass if this was a Home Alone situation because there was just nothing to hold on to. At Dad the should end not of this have movie. been a surgeon. He should have been a fucking mechanical engineer, and he Rube Goldberg's that bitch right up to the heavens. And it's like forty five <laughs> minutes of what? What? Like, why does it say drop me with this marble in this cup? And then he drops a marble in the cup, and then the cup is just heavy enough to do this, and that triggers that, and 15 minutes later, you know, someone's head gets stuck in the microwave and explodes. Like, that would have been so much Yes. Better. Yeah, the, the, the whole thing of like, oh, and then they play host, and they're going to, like, get their revenge, and then the revenge There's so is many missteps lame. in this movie. I mean... Never mind the fact that it stylistically feels like a Lifetime movie. It looks it looks like shit. Everything has this blue tint to it, which I found incredibly annoying. I don't know. Whatever. Fuck this movie. What, uh, if, if let's say you yeah. had to rate this movie on a, and, and, you know, I guess we have to start saying that on a Loathsome Things scale of zero to five Loathsome Things, what, yeah. what, what would you give it? I gave it a 2.4 out of 5. It's inches above the original, not because it's actually better than the original. It's just slightly less, like, disgustingly reprehensible than the original. Yeah. Uh, it's, like, right there at the, like, middle of mediocrity, but it's, like, just below mediocrity, where it's, like, not mediocrely good, it's mediocrely bad. So that's a 2.4 out of 5 for me. What about John's self, John? Uh, I guess that's why I was qualifying that so heavily on the Loathsome Things scale, because as a Loathsome Thing, I gave it a higher rating than the first film, considerably. I actually gave it a 3.2, which is crazy. Dang and the go. reason why I did that was because I liked the effects. They were minimal, but I liked them. I mean, the... The exploding head was ridiculous, but it worked. It looked cool. Um, the production yeah. Vi yeah, values were fun. okay. Uh, you know, whatever. It was It was definitely a horror movie. I mean, to be fair. Uh, the setting was fair, yeah. the setting was okay. The atmosphere sucked. The writing was not good. The uh, acting was terrible. I didn't really enjoy it that much. But, you know, I mean, to be fair, that was what my rating came out to. If I was gutting it, I'd probably give it like a two. But, you know, by actually trying to be somewhat objective, I'll give it a 3.21. It that I am in no way recommending anybody see this movie, including people who are friends and family of these actors. It's terrible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For example, Darren Paul, you don't need to watch this movie. Dar Darren Paul and Griselda uh, Goldwyn, no reason yeah. to sit down and... and Oh, Tony, you're in this one. Let's watch it. No, no. There's no yeah. need to just go ahead and jump right ahead to Law and Order. <laughs> yes. Not even SVU. You can nope. skip that one. Just nope. go to the original. Straight to Law and Order where he plays an attorney. <laughs> <laughs> So that's a five out of five point six out of ten low some things. That feels about right. That's 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 good money for what this is. It's pretty generous, but I guess when you look at it that way, it's it's pretty much just as average as you can be. Yeah. Do you if you want to make two hours of your life be accompanied by a, a movie that is has some moments worth remembering, but overall you can't really remember which movie that was that you saw it in, then this is the movie for you. If you want to offend your son by um, making, a, <laughs> making a crack right after uh, Mary gets shot in the water and turn to him and go, well, I guess that's her final swim, then, you know, oh. this is the movie for you. And he was like, Jesus, Dad. <laughs> Dad! <laughs> Uh, don't watch this movie if you haven't. Just don't. Yeah, it's <clears throat> it's it's not worth it. But yeah, l like I said earlier, it's it's interesting when comparing it to the other two. And beyond that, that that's really the only value that it has as a film is as a comparative conversation piece. Uh, the villains are brutal, but they're not interesting. Um, the male gaze is still here. Yep. It's overdone, and it's not great in comparison with the content of the film. 
in the first last health house there's mary has like no agency and like phyllis is the one with like any sort of presence of mind and in this one they did away with that now it's mary is the one that has like she knows what's up she's got agency she's like more able to get away she's like I'll just make it all the way to the rocking chairs, I will. And and instead of Phyllis, we get Paige, and Paige is just a um an idiot. Uh, uh, uh the the tr- she's like the trashy girl that gets her good upstanding friend in trouble. Uh she has no sense. And also, I think she just left the gas station in the middle of her shift <laughs> to go smoke weed at a desert hotel that's a good point what the hell was that about (laughs) yeah she's pretty much an afterthought too when the movie's over it's like the family just rides off into the sunset nobody even mentions Paige. it's like yeah fuck Paige. who cares (laughs) yeah yeah we just got this new son uh officer he's our (laughs) new son this is justin no i don't know what that weird residue all over the inside of the garage is is he a bad person? No, he's not a bad person. He really enjoys chocolate milk. Yeah, yeah, he's he's just empty on the inside. Why are his eyes dead? I don't know. <laughs> it's just because no one is at home. That kid has the weirdest look on his face. Like, he just looks dead. He is... Uh, I mean, I, I'm surprised they haven't seen more of him because he kind of looks like that... Uh, uh, there's a there's a couple actors that that you see in Hollywood films that whenever they need someone that's weird, they hire that guy. This dude could have filled in. Yeah, of course they probably doesn't because he can't act. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, Spencer Treat Clark. His middle name is Treat, or perhaps his first last name is Treat. I don't know, but uh, he was in Weird, the Al Yankovic story, ah. and uh, I watched that yesterday, and I was like, oh look, it's Justin. <laughs> It's treat. What a treat! There he is. Uh, <laughs> he, he looks exactly the same ten years later. Wow. Yeah, this movie. Yeah. The, the, you get the feeling that that De- Dennis Iliadis or whatever his name is that he um he may well have not even seen. He may not even be have been aware of the Virgin Spring for all I know. I mean, there's none of that in this movie. This movie is a straight, straight uh, retake of. Wes Craven's film, period, it has nothing yeah. to do with, I mean, like, Wes Craven, we know, you know, was inspired by The Virgin Spring, obviously, uh, even though it, it it's very much a different film, like, it, it took all the stupid and the most base elements and turned it into a schlock film, uh, but that that's where the connection ends, because this movie is just a straight rip on... It's not a rip. I mean, it's obviously meant as a tribute, but it's a straight rip on Craven's movie, which is a piece of shit and should never have been revisited. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 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 It even uh, this this one uh, left off the writing credit for the Virgin Spring. It just you know like lists the people that wrote the original as writing credits. So it it's just like yeah, none of that. All this. Um, I looked uh, on the Wikipedia page. It talked about how he like. Oh, Mr. Craven, do you mind if I make changes to the way your film goes? And Wes Craven was like, yeah, I don't I don't give a shit. Do whatever you want. And so, yeah. Go ahead. I'm trying to forget I made it. It's like, yeah, I really am not digging all of these new Quentin Tarantino films. So you just do whatever you want. <laughs> the world has become much, much too extreme since the <laughs> since the simpler days of the last house on the left yeah since your 1973s of your dick <laughs> so uh so out of the 3 what what are like we could we should talk about the 3 in concert with one another uh like impressions of this movement of films as as a thing and such forth um the one note that I wanted to bring up is I thought it was weird. It's not this movie. It's it's Wes Craven's. He split the character Angry into two. So in in the Virgin Spring we have Angry, and then in Last House we get Phyllis and Sadie. Are, are, are the, so they're playing these separate elements of Angry's role, and I, it's an interesting choice. And ultimately, I think it's a shitty choice. I I like right. Angry's character. Better than the split Phyllis Sadie. Ingrid is a much better character. Her moral 
quandary, her uh, bizarre connection to to Thor and and to the you know the spiritual world is is a very important element in the Virgin Spring. Uh, in in Craven's movie, it, it's absolutely irrelevant. It does it, it's not even part of the film in any way. And then, as you say, he goes ahead and splits Ingrid up into <clears throat> two characters that we don't need really. Where they're not yep. they're not important. I mean, how the, the the whole the whole thrust hello of the first movie is is you know this this character who is a symbol for different things beyond just being the daughter of this semi wealthy guy she's you know she, she's supposed to endure this this whole nightmare by herself that's the whole point like you know and then to to have her have a cohort as a plot device when the plot is already there, dude. Like, if you love the first movie so much, use its plot a little bit more. Don't inject some piece of shit 70s idea. And then De- Dennis Iliadis comes along and is like, that movie was so good that I think I should basically make the same movie but take any signs of life out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What a weird, I mean, what a weird trajectory to go from 1960 I believe it was 1960, right? To 2009. Something like that. I mean, that's a... Jesus Christ. In 50 years, essentially, that's where movies have come. Like, yeah. you know, an honest, deep, emotionally, uh, you know, uh, tormented uh, <clears throat> examination of spirituality and misogyny and class and all these different things. And let's just turn it into um, schlock. That took it took yeah, us fifty yeah. years to work that out. If there's anything that Wes Craven has taught us, it's that the bourgeoisie are the uh, are the good guys. <laughs> yes, exactly. We, I, you know, it's but what's what I find really shocking is that um, aside from a movie called Hardcore, which he made before this, and uh, a movie yeah. called Delirium that he also made, th- this dude really hasn't made much of anything. I don't know. I don't. I don't know why. I mean, he's. He's so on it. I mean, he, I know he's got a couple projects in pre or post production or something. I think they're feature films. I don't know. I won't be watching them, so I don't really care. But uh, yeah, yeah, fuck you, dude. <laughs> I like that one of the movies he directed. He didn't even put his name on. I suppose it's because it was beneath him. <laughs> did he? Did he Alan Smithy it? <laughs> it was something worse. It was like Blythe Giggles or you know something <laughs> stupid like that. Blythe giggles. <laughs> Wee! Oh, man. Yeah. I, so I was thinking yeah. about the whole threequel thing, and I think next yeah. year we should stick to just a remake. Like, a movie and a remake, maybe. Maybe we should consider Instead that. Instead of three? Yeah, because we're running out of options, for one thing. And, uh, and, and, and that opens it up quite a bit for us, and it doesn't tie down an entire fucking month. <laughs> That's true. This was too much. I agree. Like... Uh, this would have been good to do like the Virgin Spring and then the 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 last house on the left and then just breeze right past this one. That's true. I, you know, apparently there's a isn't there another movie that was riffing on this, but it had it was called Chaos or something like that. Did you read about that? Oh, there was no. a yeah, there was another take on the last house on the left. I think that predates this one. It might have been 2005 called Chaos, which apparently oh, it sounds. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't well, know. That sounds like our next episode right there. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's stretch this baby out. Let's go. And then we're going to do all the Saw movies. <laughs> all 14 of them. Starting with Saw 6. <laughs> and we're going to jump around out of order. <laughs> yeah, we're going to start in the middle and then do a spiral away from the middle. Oh! <laughs> Oh my god! Wow! Oh wow! Yeah, we're we're really stupid. <laughs> it's such a good program to tune into. <laughs> I don't know that we chose right on this this three peat. I I don't feel good about it. I it was interesting. It was a a, a neat deep dive to go down. But um, if I could go back and. And choose like uh, uh, Evil Dead. I definitely would have gone with Evil yeah. Dead instead. <laughs> yeah, 
I mean, if I if I had never gotten around to seeing the Virgin Spring, so this was the only reason I ended up seeing it in my life, then it was worth it for that, I guess. I yeah. I, I did always want to want to maybe get around to Craven's film. I did. I don't give two shits about this one. I you know, even though I rated it higher, that's basically just on a scale. It's it's not worth seeing. I mean, I don't really think Craven's is either, but at least it has historical merit, you know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, wow, brutal. Yeah. Yeah. In all the yeah. wrong ways. <laughs> yeah. And Virgin Spring was good, but it wasn't even like uh, it wasn't even a horror movie. Yeah, and it wasn't even like a top Bergman for me, like you know, like no, it, that's it, true. it it was good, but I would like if I was like, hey, let's watch an Ingmar Bergman movie, I wouldn't go with that one ever. True. No, yeah. that's true. He does heavy very well, but that movie is heavy in a way that doesn't. It's like it's too much. Like it's a little bit preachy, which I you know I'm not a fan of. Um, yeah. Where he, and he, you know, he he's a little bit more morally ambiguous with elements of some of his other films, which is part of what makes them so interesting. Don't get me wrong, Virgin Springs is a great film, but yeah, you're right. I mean, it's not. If I was gonna pick, just pick one, like like let's do Bergman next. That would not be where I would go. No, no. So, so speaking of doing and next, John, what what are we doing next? I don't know what it is. I hope. I hope it's good, and you're smiling. You look happy, so I think it's gonna be a good one. What what's what's it gonna be? I I I I, it's been I've been up in the air. I've got two different ones that I'm that I was gonna choose from. I've already made my decision though. The one that I did not choose was a um, a little Italian film uh, that was intended to be part three of a series called Demon. Uh, the demon movies, demons okay. movies or whatever. The first two movies are great. They're complete schlock. The third one was called The Church. Uh, oh, yeah. It was produced by uh, Dario Argento. Uh, his daughter is in it uh, and he, being treated creepily as usual. Mm. Uh, it's it's a very strange movie. It's, it is fun, It's but I just, it didn't suit, like for me, it just didn't seem like a good next so I'm going to go ahead and go with uh, Satanic Hispanics. Oh, yeah! Let's go! <laughs> a a l- Hispanic-themed uh, horror comedy anthology uh, with a tied, tied oh. together plot uh, with starring, uh, I think it's, the what is his name? Pedro from Napoleon Dynamite. It's, uh, oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 he, and he's hilarious in it, but... It's really good. I mean, it's got it's got some uh, some interesting little segments in it. And it's actually pretty funny, and it's gory as hell. It was it was a lot nice. of fun. I don't like saying it's a lot of fun. Every time I hear that on the show, it makes my skin crawl. But it oh, was yeah. a lot of fun. Uh, but it, no, it's good. What? But is it the one what? Is that the one uh, uh, like Demian Rugna directed or like has a part in? Yeah, I think he might have done. If I remember correctly, he did one of the short. The, one of the segments in it. There's like four or five little mini segments inside of it. Oh, okay, so it's got kind of like a VHS, like, uh, yeah. yeah, the little uh, anthology. Nice. Very cool. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. is this the first time we're doing an anthology film? I think it might be, actually. Oh, fuck yes. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, we yeah, because we did, we did Masters of Horror, which is an anthology series, but each episode is a different entry, and we just did the Carpenter one, and that was enough. <laughs> <laughs> So, some of those are actually really good. Uh, the Takashi Miike one is fucking amazing. It's nice. so strange. Uh, but yeah, Cigarette Burns was not great. And we, we, but we went ahead and did a whole episode on it. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> uh, La Satanic film, Hispanics is de monde. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, Satanic Hispanics, you should go watch, guys, before we do this next this next episode, because it's, uh, it's pretty funny. And... Uh, it's 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 more in line with uh, Lonesome Things protocol, nice. I guess. I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. Yeah, that's good. It's great. Yeah, yeah. That's the that's the brand. Yeah, Ron Brand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ron Brand. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, so speaking of horror movies, did you what uh, t- what what media did you consume that you might be willing to share with our four members in the audience? I don't remember when it was, but a while back I mentioned Fifth Thoracic Vertebrae, 
uh, a movie about uh, a mattress that grows a mold being inside of it until it gives birth. Uh, I watched that. It's um, <laughs> kind of boring. It's uh, oh. uh, yeah. It's um, like deathbed meets rubber meets the flying yeah. Karakuras, and uh. it's uh, a movie about Damn. love and loneliness. Oh, weird! What a yeah! What a blown wad! I don't know. That, that seems like a good idea, or not a good idea, but I mean. A funny premise, anyway, from the just from the title alone. But yeah, that doesn't sound very good. It, it, it's worth seeing if you're bored. Oh. It's like, oh, neat. But like, don't expect any goodness. There's not much goodness there. It's uh, like there's no awesome uh, special effects. Uh, mm. It's it's that's a big letdown because like the the cover is like a, a moldy mattress with the eyeball sticking out of it and you're like oh cool there's going to be like an awesome moldy mattress monster and uh spoiler alert it's just some chick pops out of there it's just a little slimy um such promise but there is a really great scene where you're looking at a like field of tall grass and then you see a mattress walking through the tall grass <laughs> and that's the only time the mattress does anything like that <laughs> so stupid <laughs> yeah. so. wow what about yon self john yeah well i watched the i watched the church and satanic Hispanics. Yeah. uh uh the church i enjoyed it's it's not great but it, it's one of those movies that would be fun to talk about it i mean it's it's an italian horror film from the 80s so or late 70s so figure it out you know it's a piece of shit but um, is the second uh, one the one where they're in a movie theater that gets attacked yes. by demons? Fuck yeah, I believe that movie so, kicks yes. ass. <laughs> I know, it's so good. And the, apparently this guy, like, I don't know, his name's like Rico Suavier or something, the guy that made this one. <laughs> he, he, he was like, yeah, I don't want it to be all silly like those. I want it to be taken more seriously. And I'm like, dude, you're a fucking oh, moron. Yeah. This movie... <laughs> This movie, you that's that's what this movie lacks is a sense of humor because otherwise it would be if it had a sense of humor it would be genius. I watched History of Evil, which I I had read good things about. I thought I don't know where I read them because I went back and looked for it afterwards. I was so mad. Uh, the movie <laughs> sucked. It yeah. was like it's like what if Handmaid's Tale met high school theater and all went down in a hideaway house that was haunted for no reason like it just it was like what the fuck am i watching like the united states has been taken over by a group called j6 and it's now the american federation and these they bust out this freedom fighter and she goes into a, a hideaway house and the lady that hides them away is like well we'll be safe here because everyone's scared of this house they say it's haunted and i'm just like oh are you <sighs> shitting me is that where we're going and that's where we're going and it's fucking terrible yeah, it was terrible. The Shutter, they 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 need to stop because that was not a good movie. Is that the one where it turns out that they have a cellar and the cellar is like full of like KKK memorabilia? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I saw that one. Like the hus, there's a husband and a, and the wife is the freedom fighter, and then there's the daughter, and then there's their minder, like this lady that's with them, and like at one point, of course, the husband starts getting influenced by the evil. And yeah, that sucked so much. He starts seeing, like, meeting with some ghostly right wing patron like patron landowner. Landowner with a large lazy boy chair and good booze. Like, and then he decides he's going to kill. It's just terrible. It was so. Ugh, that movie sucked. Yeah. It, it, yeah. that movie sucked a lot. And it's just because civ everyone's excited for Civil War. It's gonna, it's gonna be awesome. And so they're, you know, they, you've got to come up with the knockoff movies. And that's just, that's just Civil War, the knockoff movie. That movie blew big hard chunks. And you were talking about this one that we just watched having that like lifetime feel. That <laughs> yeah. movie was like big cheapo time. lifetime lighting, just like, what if, uh -huh. terrible terrible the performances were terrible the woman that plays the you know the the head of the rebellion or whatever has no personality yeah. but like this you're hanging your hat on this bucket of shit like you guys are fucked <laughs> it was yeah it was real bad there's all kind of nonsense with their fucking like walkie-talkie satellite box and it's stupid and it it's 
the worst. It, everything that 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 happens in that movie was stolen from something else and done better in that something else. So, you know, it was like the sum was worse than you know than its parts. I mean, it was it was the parts were okay. They took some interesting elements, but they went nowhere with it. Like you're going to make a supernatural thriller about evil. And you're going to have this weird, like, ultra right wing thing to it, which which sounded like a kind of a cool idea. I mean, Kevin Smith did a pretty good job with it in Red State. You know, yeah. I mean, Red State was surprisingly good. This movie sucked. I mean, it was yeah. it was just trash. It was like okay, it was like a student movie. Like if your friends made it, you'd be like, that's not not bad for a first movie. I uh, yeah yeah. You think I should pitch it to like to like festivals and stuff? Oh no 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 no. <laughs> but I mean, like as a first project, it's good. Yeah, it's that kind yeah. of a movie. Yeah, you know, I heard uh, Shutter fired all of the people in charge of curation. Do you think they would make it a Shutter original? Yeah, maybe. Why don't you go ahead? Sure, they've got an extra ten bucks laying around. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, they don't care weird. anymore. <laughs> no shit. Uh, uh, yeah. Fuck. So there you yeah. go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it, that's a lesson to all you out there. If you're a white guy, maybe the spirit of your ancestors will appear to you and turn you into a bucket of shit. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Okay. So go so, out there, watch, uh, what is it? S- Satanic Hispanics. Satanic Hispanics. Uh, meet us again and on the webs of yeah. tubes. Uh in two weeks where we'll discuss satanic hispanics i'm sorry that you may have watched those three movies or at least the last two uh and i'm also sorry that you all have to duck